Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's October 5th, 2020. Coming up in the Krusty Connect podcast. The Green New Deal or Big Green Steel? My take on the whole government's approach to new green technology, even though we are in the hole. All that and more coming up in the Krusty Connect podcast. Stay tuned. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. Krusty Neck Podcast is brought to you by the fine folks at Rampage Coffee Company. Strong, rich, and smooth. And the fine gentleman at canungold.com. Yes, ladies and gentlemen... I guess in the highlights of Canadian news today is basically what the government's going to do to fund new green technology. That's right. We've got a version of the AOC mandate of having a green new deal. That's right. Yes, everything green and technology will come when it comes, you know, that stuff. But in the meantime, we're going to charge you more tax and all this other good stuff. Yeah, what a fucking shit show. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you hear and see, by all means, please click the little notification bell on the YouTube, comment, like, and subscribe, and share this around. You know, uh, keep the algorithm going. Let's get the uh, personal points of view out there. Now, I'll have uh, uh, links in my description in regards to these new suggestions. I'll have a link from the energy sector that says, uh, basically, it's just buffoonery. We don't have a pot to piss in, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to uh, all this investment. Now... Last week, Justin Trudeau, and I made a point of that in my uh, live show, and in my last episode, that Justin Trudeau is willing to hand over 400 million fucking dollars to the UN to fight the beer bug, the COVID, the pandemic, whatever you want to call it now. And yet, should he not be investing that 400 million dollars into our new, quote-unquote, green dream technology? Right? Now, you look at all the facts about solar. Solar can work. But it only retains, what, 20% of its potential based on how the panels are made, do they not? Now, this is consensus I got from word of mouth, uh, a few of the links in the description. But what makes solar panels? Are they all glass? Are they all glass-based? Well, no, of course not, because it'd wreak havoc in wintertime for people that do find some solar energy in the winter. But they are plastic-based. And what exactly is plastic-based again? (gasps) Petroleum products. Yes, yes, yes. So from now on, well, actually, since the better part of uh, 2017, every time I hear Miss McKenna, when she was the Environment Minister, now she's the Minister of Infrastructure, and now Seamus O'Regan, and then what's-his-name Wilkinson is now the Minister of uh, uh, Ministry of the Environment, Right. I, I don't believe anything they have to say when it comes to it. See, when I, when I look at green technology, I look at the innovations and how we can do things based on what the Earth provides. Solar energy, for the better part of 40 years, has overcome a lot of obstacles to be where it's at today. Now, if they can only retain 20% of what it's supposed to, that's only 20% of potential that your home is going to have. And I guess a lot of these environmentalists forget about the Canadian winter. Hmm. Right? So, as much as I would love to see a renewable resource, as much as I would love to see the ability of mankind, and I said mankind, not people kind, or people kind, I would love to see something that's going to work and benefit everyone. Right? Honestly. You know, I'm not saying fossil fuels are terrible. Oh, them fossil fuels out of devil, Bobby Boucher. No, they are pretty good. They have innovated our lives drastically over the past hundred years. Okay? But if you're going to sit there and be a crusader for the environment, okay, and a crusader for renewable, clean energy, then where the fuck are the suggestions to put this forward rather than another carbon tax that's going to be coming and going to hit us all in the ass come next January? Okay? Now, whether it comes in January or February or earlier, we know it's in the works. So you can't bullshit us anymore. Don't butter up a poop sandwich, add some lettuce and tomato, and call it fucking progress. Okay? And other news, too, there's a new leader of the Green Party, Anna Marie Lees, I believe her name is. Intelligent woman. Brilliant woman. God, the history of this lady's life is fantastic. 
you know, well immersed in law, well immersed in, in uh, world law and courts and all that good stuff. Raised her family, you know, grew up in a strong household, you know, well moral individual. But uh, I don't like her. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that she's black or Jewish or the fact that she's a female. It's the fact that she's using that to her advantage. Okay? I'm not questioning her credibility to lead. I'm not questioning her ability to do anything of the sort. However, when they make a big deal, it's like, well, look at me. I'm black and I'm Jewish and look what I did. Well, okay, great for you. Does it fucking matter? So don't sit there and call yourself a crusader for the environment and then constantly pull the race card out left and right. I don't care what degree you have. I don't care how much education you have stocked away. Right? I, I, I don't care. You obviously don't have the common ability to be humble. Okay? Because there's a lot of people in this country of all races, all creeds, all origins, all identities, all faiths that struggle every day because of government's decisions. <coughs> Not because of the environment or inequity or because of uh, intersectionality or, or systemic racism. It's because of policies that politicians that you represent put in place. Right? And then turn around and say it's a racial issue. So don't sit there and say you're fighting for the fucking environment and then turn around and pull the race card. You want to clean up the environment? Fine. Let's put an end to dumping raw sewage into the waterways. Let's put an end to hoping that wind energy is going to save the day because you look at the results of Germany. How would that work for them? Right? I also suggest you look at the movie Planet of Humans. And I'll leave a link in my description for you guys to download and take a look at. Uh, it's basically quite quite a smack in the face to the whole leftist environmental emergency catastrophe agenda. Yeah, they'll, let's, let's abolish fossil fuels, but in the meantime, let's burn wood to run certain plants, to provide electricity so we can drive our little Priuses and electrical uh, hybrids all around, like a bunch of fucking Super Mario Kart enthusiasts, right? Yeah, okay. Anyway, you tell me. And what you think, CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook under Krusty Canuck. Instagram and Instagram, uh, Instagram under Krusty Canuck. And on the Wimkin and Canon.com. I have a page there where you can weigh in, give me a comment, like, share, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And I'll leave my email address and my writing address too. So if you want to send me some swagger, send me some pictures, letters, kind words, or anything for that matter, as long as it doesn't break the law. <laughs> Feel free to send me a letter or two. Anyway, carrying on. When I look at this whole green agenda, as much as I would love to see a renewable resource come up and save our lives, what are the solutions to finding said resource? Now, we can look at geothermal energy that comes from the core itself. Right? We can look at harnessing the sun's rays with a better solar panel. How do we do that? Okay, let's get some engineers to really fucking work on this. We can burn clean fuel somehow. I think biodiesel is a, a, a cool alternative. Where's the incentive in that? Where are the incentives in creating things? Now, a few years back, it was in the CBC. I'm sorry I don't have the article with me. Uh, if I can find it. But there was a gentleman in the PEI who ended up generating his own electricity based on solar and his own off-the-grid uh, calculations. And he was willing to share that power with his neighbors. Unfortunately, the PEI government had to step in and intervene. Because more or less, they weren't getting their share. Now, if anyone could find the link to that story, by all means, uh, please send it my way or read it for yourself. But uh, what I remember thinking, here's this guy who has spent a small fortune creating this off-grid pro uh, uh, program for his home so he can live comfortably without relying on big government. And then big government turns around and nails him for sharing his wealth with other people. Puts things in perspective, right? So when the government says we're doing this for the environment, are you doing it for the environment? You're doing it for yourselves. Because you, you've put us into debt. You've given us no pot to piss in. You've given money away. You've appointed people in your cabinet that haven't really merited or really have any right being there other than just being a token spokesperson like a bobblehead on a fucking cabbie's dashboard. Right, And what the hell have you promoted when it comes to clean tech? What investments are you going to put in? 
Oh, infrastructure, better bricks. Oh, energy efficient homes, energy efficient that, energy efficient this. Yeah, they were saying that shit in the late 80s too. And how well did that turn out? Oh, we're going to plant 2 billion trees. Really? This was a year ago, Justin. Where the fuck are the trees? Hell, every private citizen can go out and spend $10, $20, plant a couple of seedlings, and we'd be none the wiser, if that's the logic. Okay? If you were smart, you would have said, okay, everyone do that, and then mail in your receipts, and we'll give you a rebate. Or we'll give you a break in your fucking taxes. Helping people. You know. You know, people kind. Helping people? Yeah. Okay. But no, let's not do that. Let's look at all the science that are paid off to speak your narrative. Now, I'd rather sit and listen to Dr. Patrick Moore, one of the original founders of Greenpeace, right? and the blue-collar people that actually work in the oil fields, that have worked and built a living and built their livelihoods based on fossil fuel extraction. And I'd rather listen to what they have to say, because they see the innovations all the goddamn time when it comes to the environment. Okay. So don't sit there and say, well, we have to have social justice before climate justice. Well, what kind of infractions are we doing right now in a social aspect? I'll sum it up from what I've seen. We have government offices that separate people. They constantly put color and category and gender and spectrum in lieu of actual human determination. Okay? They also divide people by calling people racist if any of their policies is questioned. They also divide people by calling people misogynistic or xenophobic or xenophobic if they don't walk this line. Okay? And you question a female politician, oh my God, that's sexist. Or you question, question Justin Trudeau, oh my God, that's racist. So I guess in a way there is systemic racism by the parts of so-called leaders of today. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, or what's going on today. And they are promoting the so-called social justice in inequalities. With their mandates and their virtues and, oh, we're going to save the world, are we? How come we can't save ourselves? How come we can't pull Canadians out of poverty? Oh, but of course, you know, they said in Parliament, oh, we pulled a million people out of poverty. Oh, really? How? By what? A part-time job here and there? giving them a free lunch here and there or actually seeing them becoming productive members of society as we see it or as, as we speak. I don't see the proof in that. I don't see the proof in your so-called systemic racism. I don't see any kind of proof in your so-called progressivism other than divide and conquer and treating people like idiots. Every time you see Christopher Freeland come on parliament you know, Mr. Speaker, and how she tilts her head like a dog looking at the TV. You know what I mean? You know, Mr. Speaker, right? Catherine McKenna always being offended when she's approached by rebel media because they called her Climate Barbie there two or three years ago. And yet she can't answer a fucking question. She can't question, bring up where the 20,000 jobs are going, why they haven't been done, why is there billions not being spent on so-called infrastructure projects? <clears throat> Seamus O'Regan dodged in the press because he would rather invest money in Hibernia off of Newfoundland, which is nothing wrong with that. I want to see Newfoundlanders go to work too. But I want to see people out west get back to work as well. Right? Let's invest $150 million. Let's invest a billion or two in Hibernia. But let's not invest that much money in Alberta oil. No, because... Friends of the Tides Foundation, the Suzuki Foundations, and all these other so-called Green Corps corporations want to weigh in and stifle it. Anyway, tell me what you think. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com or on Instagram. Or on Twitter, on Wimkin, on Kanund, on the Facebook. Anywhere you want to reach me, I'll say I'll leave my writing address too and my email address. So send me an email. Write me a letter if you'd like to. Tell me how you feel. Hopefully in the near future. I will be setting up this podcast and actually have people calling in and speaking their minds, rightfully so. All right. And to all the people out there that want to purchase Krusty Connect merchandise, I am still working on that hockey jersey. So pay attention to my community page for updates on that. 
You can buy t-shirts, mugs, stickers, all that good stuff at my Teespring line. Uh, I'm also still working on swimsuits for the ladies and swim trunks for the guys, too. So don't feel, you know, <laughs> not included, gentlemen, because you won't get yourself some crusty Canuck bathing swagger. Needless to say, <laughs> that's in the works, too. So pay attention to my community page on YouTube and my Facebook page for updates as well when it comes to all my swagger and new information. Anyway, carrying on. This is all speculation, folks, my point of view. I didn't sit for hours upon hours and research the data, but I know enough, too, that the climate, quote-unquote, emergency is not an emergency. Yeah, climate might be changing in certain aspects of our lives. Winters are colder. Summers are getting hotter. Maybe that's Mother Nature telling us, okay, this is what's happening to the Earth as we speak right now. And I personally don't believe that the government has any kind of power to take more money and uh, say it's helping the world when they only have no blueprints or any kind of plan set aside rather than just hearsay based on the throne speech in the past weeks uh, of, of verbal diarrhea coming back and forth out of the mouths of uh, the entitled liberal Laurentian elites right oh we're going to infrastructure this oh we're going to invest in this or oh, invest in that how about invest in your own people how about invest in the first nations how about invest in the working class people of this country? All colors, all creeds. Put your race cards away. Right? Put your gender cards away. And start talking to people like they're people. Start treating people like they're people. Right? Shit simple. And yet it's so fucking hard, right? What else do we do? What else do we do besides, you know, get angry at the TV? I go outside to try to work. You know, I'm still in the process of trying to find a, a steady job. But uh, <laughs> I don't know, folks. Anyhow, here's a word for my sponsors. Rampage Coffee Company. Extremely delicious coffee. Roasted with purpose, then delivered to your favorite mug. Our delicious coffee comes packed with enough attitude to punch you out of your morning slippers. Here at Rampage Coffee Company, we provide you superior quality coffee that is delivered to the doorsteps of any Canadian who is ready to take their coffee game to the next level. We hand select quality beans to be a small batch roasted by our head roaster, which ensures unparalleled attention to details and amazing quality in all our coffee. Cheers to a freshly roasted kick-ass coffee. Rampage Coffee Company. Use the code Krusty Canuck to get free shipping on the Rampage Sampler. The new CEO of Canad Gold Corp. We have gold at 99% purity with discounts ranging from $100 up to $200 off the ounce. This is the right place to buy from 2 gram cards to 400 ounce bricks. We have any quantity of gold you are looking for. We also sell by the ton, not like your ex wife. Visit us today at canadgold.com. C A N U N D gold.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Check out the fine gentlemen at canongold.com and the fine folks at Rampage Coffee Company. All right, carrying on with my speculation and take on this whole environmental catastrophe and more spending in the sake of virtue. That's what I think it all is. You know, just to keep power, just to gain power. And there's been a lot of speculation too online with, with what is going on with Yagmeet Singh and the NDP now, they haven't had a vote yet on the throne speech. They haven't had any kind of agreement. It's safe to assume that the NDP will go along with Justin Trudeau and his fucking follies and his overspending tactics just to maintain whatever power is left to suck the life out of our economy as we see it. And sure, the NDP doesn't have a pot to piss in because, well, they can't afford an election. Well... The way I look at it, every one of those MPs can take fifty grand out of their fucking hundred eighty thousand dollar salary and put it towards the election if that's the case, right? There are a lot of Canadians out there who've had to spend money to keep their fucking jobs one way or the other. MPs, MLAs, and MPPs are no fucking different. So, that being said, I don't vote any kind of confidence in what the Liberal Party has done since twenty fifteen, and in fact, when you look historically on what the Liberal Party has done to uh, certain groups such as the military, veterans, the environment, right? 
They've always catered to one province or the next or a group of people over the next. They've never been totally equal in the sense of the name of equality, right? They prefer, they prefer equity, meaning they want to tell you what to do with your money and tell you how to monitor your wealth so they can take a chunk of change for the sake of their fucking taxes and their overspending, right? It's that simple, right? And we look at the mainstream media too now, especially here in Canada, let's concentrate on Donald Trump getting over COVID. Okay, so be it, right? I've said my spiel the last time when it comes to watching that debate. What a shit show. But I'm not going to sit and brag about anything because our debates are just as fucking terrible too. <coughs> There's no more professionalism in our political uh, debating formats anymore. We're not finding good, strong leaders anymore. There's strong leaders out there. But one, they're afraid to speak their mind. Or two, they want to toe the party line. So, my suggestion is this, ladies and gentlemen. Recycle your cans, recycle your bottles. Find ways to make your life comfortable. Don't rely on the government to do it for you. They want to take more carbon tax. Look at the big green new plan that Ontario tried about 10 years ago. How many jobs were lost? How much debt was created because of the green new plans? Right? How many things kind of fell through or things went missing because of said green new plan? Right? I want to see more ecologists, actual legitimate ecologists, weigh in on how we can create a renewable energy without relying on burning anything. Can it be done? I'm going to leave a link to Planet of Humans too. An excellent movie. And ironically enough, it was produced by Michael Moore, Mr. Leftist Aficionado himself. Don't get me wrong, he's actually done some good work in, in the name of documentaries, but uh, sometimes his politics just makes my head spin. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? Right? But uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description. And you decide yourselves how these green new plans are working for us. Are they working for us? They're working for a handful of corporations, right? Working for a handful of crony capitalists rather than individual capitalists such as you and I. So things in perspective. And if you get a chance, please try to get your hands on a copy of Climate Hustle 1 and Climate Hustle 2. Okay, Some very, very informative uh, people there who are onto this scheme of how we all have to panic and worry and put our money forward to this new Green New Deal in the United States and Canada and Europe, especially under the guise of the UN. You've heard me ramble on about the UN enough times and their fucking phony politics. <clears throat> right? So I highly suggest, ladies and gentlemen, you check those out too if you get a chance. So, And if you do feel like donating, um, please do. You can find my links in the description. Uh, find me through PayPal, Subscribestar, Podbean, all that good stuff. Uh, Five to ten dollars a month, ladies and gentlemen, will get your free T-shirt, your choice for my uh, Teespring line. You commit a donation of five to ten dollars a month, you'll get yourself a free T-shirt. And if you don't feel like donating, that's fine. And if you just want to buy some swagger, that's fine too, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I'm getting f close to getting a few more hours where uh, she hopefully. Uh, the tube will start monetizing my work. So, but nonetheless, if you feel like donating, please do, please consider. And if you like what you see in here, please uh, click like, subscribe, comment, and do not forget to click that notification bell at the uh, right-hand side of your screen under my title there. So that way you're notified when new content is coming your way. And pay attention to my community page on YouTube as well. I'll give you all updates on progress of kit. Uh, clothing designs, politics, and episodes, and live streams. And I try to do a live stream every two weeks. I did one there uh, last Thursday, so on the 1st of October. So yes, the next one will probably be the 14th or 15th of October, so pay attention to that. And thank you once again to everyone who has come out to that. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, too, to my new subscribers as well, and the kind responses I've been getting from all over Ontario and parts of the United States. Thank you very much people like you that keep this fire going and it's politicians like our government that keeps my fire fucking raging so hey let's keep that in mind let's get the independent words out there all right let's keep things focused here what's going to be best for our environment ladies and gentlemen well of course i want clean air i want clean rivers i want good mountains i want fresh trees 
I also want the ability to go buy some lumber if I want to build something too without paying through the fucking hoop in the name of carbon tax or tariff or whatever other fucking sock tax suck puppet comes up with, right? I also like to go and purchase uh, milk and eggs and meat without worrying about someone's feelings or the plant-based fucking industry getting their panties in a bunch, right? I'd like to see and hear more hard truths about what's going to happen. Not just speculation, like I'm promoting, ironically enough, but in the same sense, I want to see results. What kind of plans are in the works for our environment? What are we going to do? Are we going to use uh, thermal energy? Are we going to create turbines that can harness the wind? They tried those, those wind turbines in Ontario and parts of Europe. How did that work out? Right? You gotta dig and mine raw materials to make these wind turbines, and then what? And then they don't work, and they get dismantled. What do you do with the parts? Can they be recycled into other things? Not entirely. So let's look for some viable solutions here. Let's put our government on the spot and say, okay, you're gonna spend all this money on this infrastructure and these so called better bricks. Build back better. Build back better. Yeah. Sounds like an old TV advert from when I was a child. What are the viable solutions going into this? Oh, we're going to create 60,000 jobs. Great. Well, we need more than 60,000 jobs, and we need you guys, the government, to get your hands out of the private sector so people can carry on and start making money again. See? There's something you can do with the environment. You can help the environment by staying the fuck out of people's lives and fucking with their livelihoods in the name of your fear-mongering and pandemic bullshit. As we speak right now, Quebec police have the authority just to get a basic glorified email to enter your home if you have more than one or two residents staying there. No more parties, no more get-togethers. I'll leave a link from the True North on how some of these rules are just ridiculous. Oh, fuck, just a nightmare. 1984, folks. Orwellian, all in the name of Public safety. Yeah, okay. Luckily where I live, I haven't had a knock on the door from a police officer telling me my business. I just won't tolerate it either, too. Right? So, and you, my listeners, and my viewers alike, I expect you to do the same. Don't tolerate it. Stand your ground. Stand for what's right. Let's look for some viable solutions to the so-called climate emergency. And start using some common sense. I think Canadian fossil fuels is probably the cleanest in the world because we have the highest environmental standards. Some are higher than our American friends. Some of them are higher than our British and our Norwegian. Right? But the powers that be want to keep it in the ground because maybe they want to keep them for themselves for a rainy day. Or they want to sell it off to somebody else. And our politicians don't have the cojones to say, ah, no, fuck you. That's my uh, suggestion. That's my speculation. What say you, folks? So again, I will plead. I will plead to the masses. Ask the tough questions. Right? It's funny, I haven't really heard a lot from my local MP in this area. I got a pamphlet in the mail the other day. That's great. But why isn't he on television? Screaming and yelling in Parliament. Causing shit. Kicking ass, taking names. I guess they're paving the way for us veterans to join our parties and do it for them. Well, I don't mind doing that. I don't mind doing that at all. And I hope to God there's a big no. When it comes to the confidence of this throne speech. And I don't really don't care if the NDP can't afford an election or not. Which is more important? The longevity and sanctity of our country? Or because a handful of politicians can't afford an election? Aw, oh, pumpkins. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 5th of October 2020. Uh, I don't know what to say other than uh, we got to do what we can to find the viable solutions. That simple. You know, do our own research. Get out there and find the facts. I don't believe the sky is going to fall. I don't believe the oceans are going to flood us out. I just believe we've got morons calling the shots. And we've got to take better shots. 
And I'm not going to say build back better. I'm going to say let's build this properly and together. Anyhow, like I said, I've been Krusty Canuck. And as I always say, ladies and gentlemen, look after your friends, your loved ones. Do what you can. And remember, humanity and merit will win the day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here.